Okay, so that's what you put in the server name. So parentheses, all lowercase, local DB, backslash, MS, SQL, local DB. MS, Microsoft, SQL, local DB. Once you enter that in the server name, you click connect, you should, it, it will connect to your uh, local DB server. Do you have that? Do you connect to it? Okay, once you connect, click connect. <coughs> when you come to this, And if you expand the databases folder, and uh, really there's no database right now. We haven't created any database. <coughs> so there, here, so here's my ERD. <coughs> This is all, they're all the tables I have for my project so far. So I will create a database and also then create all the tables for this one. I will use three tables as examples for today. I'm not gonna go through all of them. And then I will move on to the step two, and then go to step three. <coughs> so first, let's create a database. Let me create a database. It's super easy to create a database using this graphical interface. All right, so we don't have to write SQL language manually to create a database. We, we just use you know, this nice user interface. Right click, choose new database, and give a database name. <coughs> so my project, I will, I will call my project a food court. It's like student center, you got a lot of restaurants there. So this is my database name, that's all you need, click OK. Uh, I've got a database here. If I expand my database, expand tables folder, there's nothing there. Because I haven't created. This is an empty database, there's no tables. So this is, let's, uh, let me create my first table, restaurant table. Uh, to create a table, it's also very easy. Right-click the table, table folder, and choose new, and choose new table. Now look at that in interface. It's very intuitive. Column name, data type. Does it allow no value for that field? So first column, res restaurant ID, data type integer. So this will be will be my primary key, so it doesn't allow no bad. Restaurant name will be a bar car fifty one hundred. <coughs> so the bar char parentheses that's the data type and also the maximum length. The field can hold. Uh, restaurant names, uh, then it's a street, a uh, street. Bar char 50 is fine. City, bar char 50. State, bar char 2. Zip code, bar char. <clears throat> this restaurant has person ID.
easy, right? Okay, now <clears throat> I need to specify, uh, identify the primary key. So restaurant ID will be my primary key, so I'll highlight this column. <clears throat> and there is a little icon here that says key. Looks like a key. It says set primary key and click it. That's it. <clears throat> now restaurant ID becomes the primary key. And the person ID is my foreign key. But I there's no place for you to specify it's a foreign key or not. We will later on I will show you how to specify this one as a foreign key by setting up a relationship between two tables. <clears throat> Alright, so right now we're here, we can say click save. Look, the table is not saved. The, the, by default, the name is table underscore one. So we need to give a meaningful name. Uh, click save button here. And name restaurant. And click OK. So finish one table. Questions? All right, so I created a table, but under my tables folder, there's nothing there. Um, we need to refresh this folder, refresh the view, so we'll see the new table. You can right click, then choose refresh, or there's a little refresh icon here on the top. So refresh, now we see our table here. And you can expand this table, you can check all the columns, and you also can check keys, there's a primary key, PK restaurant. That's the one we created earlier. Any questions? All right, I'm going to create the second table. <coughs> this table is the person table. The person ID, data type integer, Oh, and uh, the data type, I forgot to mention, there's a drop down. If you click the drop down, it shows all the data types that SQL Server support. Integer, you don't have to give a size because by default, integer is 32 bit. If you think 32 bit integer is not enough, you can choose a bigger one, which is called big, big int. Uh, I believe that's 64 bit. <clears throat> or if you think that integer is too big, you want to do a 16 bit, it's called a small int. If you want to do an 8 bit, that would be tiny int. So it's all listed here. All right, the second column is called first name. And bar chart 50, last name, bar chart 50. Email. Password. Phone. <coughs> Last. Last login time, data type is date time. <clears throat> then a person can have a row. <clears throat> because um, my requirement is one person can only have one row, so I have a row ID in this table. <clears throat> so again, I need to set up a set up a primary key, which is person ID, click it, there you go. Now I need to save the table, save it back. person. <coughs> Quickly change something. <coughs> All right, my person table created, I have my restaurant table created. Now I need to set up the relationship between these two tables. 
So to set up this relationship, first you open up the table that contains the foreign key. Since the order is really important, pay attention. You open the table that contains a foreign key. So my restaurant table has the foreign key, right? Person ID. <clears throat> Once you have this table open, well, if you accidentally click uh, close that, so how do you go back to that uh, interface? You right click the restaurant table and go to design, click design. Then you come back to this design mode. So you open the table in design mode. The table contains the foreign key you want to set. Now, the icon next to the primary key icon is called relationships. So click relationships. Got it? Now, click add, because there's no relationship. So we're gonna click add. All right, pay attention to now. Okay, here, now. See, on the general, there's a field called the tables and the columns specification. And there's a little arrow in front of it. Expand it. Right. Then after you expand it, you will see uh, three dots next to it and click three dots. Click the three dot button and open up this table and column. So here is where you set up the primary key, foreign key relationship. So our foreign key table is the res restaurant table. And the foreign key, what's the foreign key in my restaurant table? Person ID. So I have to go come over here and say it's the person ID. The person ID is in the primary key. Which, prim which table contains this primary key? Person table. And the column is called a person ID. create this name called FK underscore the first table, the second table. So it tells you it's F FK means a foreign key relationship between these two tables. You can change the name, but I don't recommend it. Because it's very clear, it tells you it's a foreign key relationship between this table and this table. This table. And I click close, <clears throat> right? And uh, whenever you create a new relationship, you are modifying the table. So you see that tab has a little star that becomes yellow that tells you the table has been modified, has it been changed, has it been saved. So you click save and immediate uh, and it will say these tables will be your mod you when you're creating a relationship between two tables, you are modifying two tables. And we will ask you uh, make sure you're Remember, you're mo uh, making modifications on those two tables. Those two tables will be affected. If you say yes, and uh, it will say. Did you get an error when you say it? I see a lot of people are not following you because you did, you're supposed to get an error. You didn't get an error? It's saved. Okay, all right. Now let's do something else. Uh, let's say if we'll, it will give us an error. I know how to get an error. 
All right, let's go to the person table. Where's my person? There you go. Okay, now let's look at the person's table. Remember, on my person's table, person, person ID is a primary key. It's an integer. And uh, uh, so every, I want the person ID to, I want the SQ, I want SQL Server to handle the, uh, the ID for new person. I don't want to assign a unique ID for the person, for a new person. So we can use auto increment. <clears throat> so in order to use auto increment, you need to s specify this column. It's a, first, it's integer type, or it's a small int, big int, doesn't matter, it's integer type. Then on, on the bottom pane here, there's a field called identity specification, expand this one. By default, its identity is set to no. We need to change to true, yes. When, it, when we set it to yes, and this identity C means the ID starts one, starts from one. Increment means every time a new record is inserted, the ID will increment by one automatically. So now, when I add a new uh, person, I do not need to give an ID. It's the SQL Server will automatically assign a new ID. Right. So now we change the table. Now let's save it. Save the table. Who got an error? If you didn't raise your hand, that means that's something you, you're, you're not following or you already done this before. So you will get an error when they save all right, like that. <clears throat> Basically, SQL Server says you are changing the database structure. Because we're saying well, any, anytime you already have a database already built, you try to mock change the lay, uh, the the schema like you're trying to change the data type or you're trying to change anything on the field at every field is causing uh, is caused some error like this. The reason is SQL Server in order to to apply these new changes that you made on the table, SQL Server must drop the table first, then recreate the table using the new criteria you mentioned here. So when you drop a table, what's gonna happen if you have data in it? You lose everything. There you go. It's gone. SQL Server is not gonna make a backup for you before they drop the drops the table. When you say drop the table, it drops the table, including all the data it's contained. So that's why by default, SQL Server will not l let you do that to protect you. But since we are, at this moment, we are building our database, we're gonna make a lot of changes, and also our tables are usually empty. So even if you drop the table, that's fine, we are not gonna be losing it. So, click cancel. We need to tell SQL Server, do not prevent this thing from happening. All right. Click tools, go to options, and in the left, on the left side, there's one field called the designers. You choose designers, and you see that little uh, one, six box says prevent saving changes that requires table recreation. Yes. Go to op, in simple server, go to tools, go to option, and on the left side, there's one called the designer. Designers. And the, the, this checkbox, by default, is, is tick. So we need to untick this one. <clears throat> so this tells a SQL Server, hey, if you need to recreate the table, that's fine. Then click OK, then save this table.
then you will not see the error anymore. <clears throat> so this is very helpful if you are working on a production database. It already have already has a lot of data in it. So when you change the data schema, it's, it can be very dangerous. So if you are changing, let's say, uh, here the uh, password, the length is bar chart 100, and if I change it to 50, what's gonna happen is if you have data, when you change it from a large data type to a small data type, it will have to truncate your existing data in order to fit into that small data type. So by default, you don't want to do that, so SQL Server pro protect you there. <clears throat> All right, Let's let me create another table called row, so I can create another relationship between this person table and the row table. primary key, but I'm not going to set it as auto increment. I only have one restaurant. There's no need for me to set it up. And the row, I probably have two or three. I can manually set those IDs. All right. You only need, it's only helpful if you have, you know you're going to have a lot of data in there. You, you, do, you, do want, you don't want to manually assign each uh, primary key value. You can set it to auto increment. <clears throat> but it doesn't hurt if you want to set it as well. Okay, so now let's create a relationship between my person and row. Okay, which table I should uh, open? The person table. Remember, you always open the person table that has the pri uh, foreign key. What if I didn't? Let's say I'm, I'm opening my row table I want to create a relationship between person and row in the, if I click relationship and I click add and I come over here, see that table is locked. I cannot choose the foreign key table. This table has, there's no foreign key this, in this table. Does that make sense? This foreign key table is you cannot change it. You can only change the primary key table. So, which is really important. All right, when you create a relationship, the first table you open in the design mode is the table that contains the fire for foreign key. So I need to open the person table because the, this table has a foreign key called row ID. Once I have this table open in design in the design mode, now I can click relationship. There is already a relationship there, but that's the relationship between restaurant and a person. So we need to have a new relationship there. Click add. Now I can specify the tables and the columns. So the foreign key is in person's table, and the foreign key is called row ID. It points to this primary key, row ID. Right? <coughs> All right, click OK, and click close, and click Save All. <clears throat> this shows me you know, two tables will be affected. If you don't want this warning to pop up in the future, uncheck this box. Warn about table affected. <clears throat> yes. Of 
question? <clears throat> so, like I said, I will, I will only create three tables, and you just, this is the process you use to create, create your database for your own product uh, until you finish all the tables on your um, ERD diagram. I don't know how many tables you have, but you make sure you have everything created in SQL Server. So once you have SQL Server create, all the tables created in SQL Server, now it's time to move on to the Visual Studio. Okay, you ready? All right, I know it's three o'clock. Hi, too. Come on, all right. I'm excited. Come on, Vero Studio Code. Oh, uh, Vero Studio. Only 45 minutes left, but then you can go enjoy your spring break, hopefully. If you don't have class tomorrow, Friday. Okay, so you have this. Then we are going to uh, team lead. All right, team lead, second step. We're going to get this SQL database we created into the Visual Studio project. <clears throat> All right, click create a new product. All right, you will see a, on the right side, don't worry about the left side, on the right side, you have a list of templates. <clears throat> Those are the temp templates that Visual Studio supports. And Visual Studio can help you use those templates to quickly set up your project. All right, so we are going to use the three drop downs on the top to filter this list. So the first drop down, we choose C sharp. Second drop down, all platforms, that's fine, leave it there. Third one, choose web. And uh, <clears throat> you sh should see the second item template called ASP.NET Core Web App, parentheses, raise the pages. You don't? All right. Who else doesn't see that? Okay, so that means when you install Visual Studio, you miss the uh, one important component. When you install Visual Studio, you need to install two important components. One is called ASP.NET development. The second one is data storage. So <clears throat> launch your Visual Studio installer. So you should have this Vero Studio installer. <clears throat> All right, do you see that Vero Studio installer? Then click modify. So you, you're supposed to have this check, ASP.NET and web development. Now if you scroll down, there's another one called data storage and the processing. Most likely, this one is not checked. Is it, is it right? Is that for me? I actually have it backwards. I have the ASP missing. Okay, so if you miss one of them, you probably won't see that template. So every component here will add something to that temp temp template list. So if you don't have those, you have to make sure this two check and also double check the individual component. Do a search, git. Make sure git for Windows is checked. It should, by default, it should check. If it's not, check that box. And uh, you have to install all those components. Uh, I think it's pretty big, couple of gigabytes. So, um, I will continue. Maybe your team man, team team uh, team member will uh, continue the process. Okay. All right. So choose the second one: ASP.NET or Web App (parentheses) Razor Pages. Are we all here? Click next, <clears throat> give a project name. So my project name, I will call it food court. 
And uh, the third text box called solution name. So a solution is just like a container. It contains multiple projects. It can group all multiple projects to make it a solution. So the solution name doesn't matter. Usually, when you create a project, it uses the project name as your solution. If you only have one project, you can just keep it the same name. But if, if you have multiple projects, you, want, you may want to have a, just a solution name, and then you have different project names. So in, in our case, we will have at least two projects. One is the web project. The other one is the SQL project. So I'm going to change my project name to Footcore Web. That's the web application project. Then in, inside the solution, there's another project called the SQL Server Database project. We will come uh, cover that later. So, but when I change the project name, it will change the solution name. But um, you can change it back. So my whole solution is called Food Core. Inside of the solution, I have two separate projects. Does that make sense? So you 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 want to do that same thing, you know, if you have multiple projects in the solution, don't use the one of the project name as your solution. It, it, it will get very confusing. Now click next. Um, just make sure .NET, .NET uh, 8 is selected and uh, HTTPS is checked. You should have .NET 8 installed. If you don't, you can choose you can choose a different one. Oh, I only have two. Uh, I only have one .NET 8. Um, if you use your computer a lot, uh, the, doing development a lot, like 2019, the 2020, you may have different uh, versions of .NET. So we use the latest one, .NET 8. Then click Create. <coughs> All right, here we go. Did we write any code? But this is a full-blown web application. You can run it. It will give you a web page. And uh, if the, you will get a warning. Because remember, we checked HTTPS. It will say, hey, your, your certificate is not, I cannot verify your certificate. Are you sure you want to use that certificate? Yeah, you just click yes. This is our own machine. We know that certificate is valid. And you just say yes. You want to install the certificate? So yes. This is the web application we just created. We didn't write any code. We just did some configuration, gave some parameters, and we got the page. And we can go to the home page. We can go to the privacy page. We can go back to the home page. So it's all already run. So this is the, that's why we use uh, Visual Studio. It's pretty powerful. Now we have the web application now. <coughs> After spring break, I will explain on the right side what those folders are and all the how our uh, future web pages will be stored under this folder, pages folder, and how do we create a page. And if I need to modify the theme, like the header and the footer, which file I need to work uh, to, to use. So after spring break, we will cover that. Okay, now. I finished this part, Visual Studio Code part. Now I need to add the SQL Server into my Visual Studio. You ready? Right click solution. Go to add a new project. <coughs> I 
I would expect you if you're using touchpad to, to follow me quickly. Alright, alright, let's go. Web, not the web application anymore. It's a SQL Server project. And the language is not C sharp anymore, it's a query language. Now the project shows up, it's called SQL Server Database Problem. Select that one and I click next. And I need to give a project name. So I'm going to name the project the course. See, I'm using my solution name, then followed by something else. So this is called a DB project. <coughs> Click uh, create. So this way, when I, I like this type of naming convention is it fo start with my solution then followed by something else. I know, okay, this is like belong to a full course so solution, and the name of the project is web or the database. <clears throat> so if we look at the database, <clears throat> so I want you to right click the database project and choose properties. <clears throat> Do you have that? Properties, right click project and go to properties, you will see the window like this. And here the first drop down says target platform. So this project is built targeting a SQL Server 2022 or Microsoft Azure SQL database. The SQL Server we installed is 2019, we don't have 2022. So we need to reduce the platform from 2022 to 2019. Then click save and then we can close this window. Now I need to import this database server I created database into my SQL Server uh, Visual Studio. You are very quiet. Last section is <laughs> click click click. All the keyboards are going. All right, come on. We're almost there. Right click, click import, database. So you will see a screen like this. It will ask you, where's the, uh, where's the database you want to connect, uh, connect to? So select connection, and you should, you, this is, you will have an empty screen like this. Right, because you never connect to your SQL Server before. So, uh, so the history is empty, but there's a button called Browse, or the tab called Browse. Click Browse, and uh, expand local, and they should have this one there, MS SQL Local DB. Click. Then under the database name, you can Click the drop down, the database I created should uh, pop up. I click that one, and we don't worry about the encryption, so I'm going to do optional. And click connect. So my, my Google Studio knows where the database is and that all the credential works because I'm using Windows authentication. So I don't have to provide username and password. And then I can say, all right, uh, here, because we're using SQL uh, Windows authentication, so I don't need the reference login. So I can uncheck that box. Then click start. And click start. If you look at the database project, there's a new folder called the DBO. And if you expand the folder, you will see a tables folder. If you expand, those are the three tables I created in SQL Server. <clears throat> These are not actual tables. If you look at the file extension, it's .sql. That means it's an SQL file. So if you want, if you're interested, you can double click. It will open up. This actually, this is what's in the file. 
So this is what you do if you need to manually create a database or a table. If you don't want to use SQL Server Management Studio, you want to do like command line, create a database. That's the thing you want to enter. Create a table, table name, all the columns, data type, and uh, uh, constraints, right? If you go back to the PowerPoint slides, there's one slide that says how do you create a table. It's create, followed by the table name, then column, each column, data type, and the constraint. And the very last two lines shows the foreign key constraint. How do you set up the foreign key? So you can see it's pretty complicated to manually create a table. I would rather use SQL Server Management Studio. Because I'm, I'm not a DBA, I'm, I'm a developer, so I don't want to use, some developer wants to uh, use uh, command line, not me. Okay, I got this. So I finished this part. Now it's time to push to GitHub. You ready? Okay, look at your SQL Vero Studio at the right bottom side. There is one that says add to source control. Click that one. Choose Git. You will see a screen like this. The only difference is your account is not a drop down, but it says sign in. Because you never used it before. If you don't, that means you already connected to GitHub in the, uh, in the past. Uh, <clears throat> so if you see sign in, click sign in, and then you will have a little drop down that says GitHub account. And click GitHub, then it will redirect you to a web page, GitHub login. And login because I already did so I I can't go through that process again so I will wait until you finish your process yes where is source control again? at the bottom of your Visual Studio code there says add to source control you click then choose git you will come to the screen but the account says sign in and you click sign in, and uh, I think that they would say GitHub account. You click GitHub account, it opens your browser, asks you to log in. Once you log in, it will say success, you can close the window. And you close the window, come, we'll come back to this, and we'll have your login username pre-populated. Since I already signed in, so we populate my name, my username. And it will use your solution name as the, re the name of the repository. If you don't want, you can change, but I wouldn't recommend you to change anything. Just keep it like that. Did you sign in? Or you're, I, I know, if you're not following, so you're waiting for your team lead to finish this stuff, because I'm not a team lead, I'm not gonna do this. Okay, I'm going to move on. All right, so I say create and a push. So this, will, what it does is, it will create a repository on your GitHub account, then push everything, all the code, to your GitHub account. So let's take a look at my GitHub account. First, say this is my repository. All right, so there's not, there's a no full core there. So I'm going to create and push. You have to save everything before you can uh, push your code to GitHub. So here's a little notification there. <coughs> All right, it says it's successful. Now, if I go back to my GitHub and refresh this page, I have this <coughs> created. If I click, open up, open my GitHub, so this is the DB project, this is web project, <coughs> has all the SQL statements there. If you 
double click. Here's the simple <coughs> what we use to create the your table. All right. Any questions, team leads? You think you have enough information to create your own repository for your project? Okay, so at this moment, you create your repository, you, in, uh, you check in all the code, and then you go to your place, and this is the time you, you can invite me into to your repository. <clears throat> I know some of you already created a repository in uh, uh, GitHub. If you haven't done anything, I'd uh, like you to delete that repository. And use Visual Studio to create a repository. It's a lot easier. If you do it the other way, it, there, it, it's doable, but it's complicated. Okay, so how do you delete a repository? You op open the repository and go to setting. And scroll down, there's one called a danger zone. And the very bottom says delete this repository. And it will ask you twice to confirm you want to delete. All right, because this is, you cannot undo it if you delete. So you say delete, I want to delete. I really want to delete. <laughs> and even that, you still have to do something. Right? You have to give the repository name to make sure you really want to delete. Now you can delete. I'm not going to delete mine. I, I need it you know, right now. I will delete later. OK. Are we, any questions, especially team lead or the designated person who will create your repository. Any questions? OK, <clears throat> now, for those who have been waiting for this step, now it's your turn. So now, your team lead create the repository and uh, send you this link, the repository link, right? That fit. <clears throat> Now let me set up my machine first. First, I will delete everything I have done earlier. So this is the project I created, so I'm gonna delete that one. database I created earlier and delete. So now I'm a team member, right? I've been waiting patiently. Now it's my turn. I log in, I come to Vero Studio, I have nothing, right? Because I didn't create the project. I'm a team member. And my SQL server, there's no database created. Uh, the only thing I have is the link to the GitHub repository. So instead of clicking this, you will click this. Clone a repository. And uh, paste to the link. <coughs> in the repository location field and click clone. That's all you need to do. Now you get you see that everything that your team they created, Visual Studio Code and the SQL, it's all in your Visual Studio here. The solution name is the same, 
and we've got a DB project, we've got a web project, it's all here. All right, so we're, we got this. We got this from GitHub. So now my single server is empty. I need to take this and uh, create those tables and then the database and all the tables. Does that make sense? Okay, to do that, it's really simple. You right click the DB project. Okay, this is your DB project. Right click and you go to publish. And they will ask you, where's your database? So again, we need to select the, the database. So click edit. So you should have something like that here already. If you don't, you can always go to browse, click local, and just do this one. And click OK. And if you choose that one, the database name is not there, so you have to manually type in database name. But if you already have this history, if I have this, if I click OK, then the database name will populate there, says put court. You can change the name. If the name is not populated, then write it full core or whatever you, uh, your team lead call the database, right? Then publish. And uh, it says everything is fine, published, completed successfully. I'll go back to this database, refresh, and the database, and all the tables, even the relationships, foreign keys, everything is there, everything. <coughs> now, you all have the same copy. And you can start working on your project simultaneously. As long as you're not working on the same file, you're fine. So you work on this, you work on this, just like your Google Docs, you can both work on the same, different sections of the work, uh, Google Docs. And then after spring break, I will talk about, I will teach, show you how, maybe you already know, how you can push everything to GitHub and GitHub will merge all the changes together. So you don't have to worry about, hey, did that get your copy, did that get your copy, what you modify. But if you happen to work on the same file, it may cause a conflict when you try to merge. So, but Virus, uh, Virus Studio has a feature we will be able to see what, where the conflict is, so we can manually merge to, to, to resolve those conflicts. To make, um, so don't worry if you, lose, if you say, oh, I'm conflict, do I have to lose what I have done for, for the past a week? No, it's pretty safe, GitHub. Pretty, pretty safe. So, how many of you have heard or used SQL, uh, GitHub in the past? So you do like merge, pull, commit, all that kind of stuff. All right, we will we'll cover that after spring break. Um, that's all. Okay. And uh, also. For the SQL uh, assignment, I made a mistake on question six and also the last question. Uh, I updated the assignment, so you may want to get a new copy to, if you want to do the same test. That one. There is a table called order. All right. If you do select star from order, then you get an error. And. Uh, and the error message is pretty weird, so you, you probably don't have no clue what the problem is. So, 
think about select star from 